Welcome to the Inspired Evolution, and it is, it's a real healthy treat to be here today. We've got with us David Asprey. Dave, how are you? I am really well. It is such a treat to have Dave here. For those tuning in today for the first time, I would kindly invite you to crawl out from under the rock you have been living. But nonetheless, let me quickly do the honors. Dave is a New York Times bestselling science author again and again and again. He's the founder of Bulletproof, the creator of Bulletproof Coffee, which we love. He's the host of Bulletproof Radio. If you haven't tuned in, please do. And he is the father of biohacking. Biohacking actually seems to be a part of our common vernacular at the moment. The term has underpinned a worldwide phenomenon. We have global events, we've got books, courses, discourses dedicated to this entire topic. What may actually be hard to believe, though, is that biohacking was a new word that was added to the English language in just 2018 in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. And actually, you will find Dave in the very definition of biohacking. Dave, it is such a pleasure, mate. I'm, really t- I'm I'm happy to be here, man. Anytime I get to talk about this stuff that I do for fun, that's really changed my life and I get to share it, it makes me happy. It's such a blessing to be in that slept stream, hey, where you actually get to show up and do the things that you love and somehow the world gets value from that. Oh, what a trip. And that's such like an expression of vitality that comes through in that, right? Yeah, there's, there's, it does something good for you energetically. Just uh, people have lost a million pounds on the bulletproof diet, and you know, people I don't know reach out and they're like, Dave, this is, this is what this knowledge did for me. I'm like, wow, that, that feels pretty good. Mm, I love that. So, man, tell us a little bit. I'd love to, not at the risk of uh, insulting you, the minute you show up, um, I'd love to hear from the horse's mouth. <laughs> what is biohacking to you? <laughs> Well, when I, I was first putting together the the movement and, and building a community around it and did the first conference, I'm like we need a really carefully thought out definition. Mm. And after a lot of kind of soul seeking, it was the art and science of changing the environment around you and inside of you so that you have full control of your own biology. And the reason for the definition being that way is I'd already spent more than a decade running an anti-aging nonprofit group. Uh, where we'd bring in the world's top anti-aging doctors before anti-aging was as acceptable as it is today. But you couldn't get a neuroscientist in there. You couldn't get a Navy SEAL in there. You wouldn't get all the different things that are elements of human performance. And it turns out that saying control of your biology, it allows the guys, my goal, I want to be swole. (laughs) To get that person in the same room as someone says, I want to live to 200 and someone Mm -hmm. else says, I want to be the smartest and someone else says, I want to be the fastest. And so what we're all looking for is the power to do what we want to do without letting our own bodies, our own limitations stop us because those limitations largely are hackable. Yeah, and even in that definition, the way you described it just then was there is almost like there is a natural current that is almost coming through us, but there are limitations that are placed in place that we need to get out of our own way is kind of what I'm hearing in there. Some of those are are self-limitations and some of those are, you know, just in the environment around you and you wouldn't even know that you were doing it wrong. So mm. for instance, you know, my new book is about fasting and the reason you have breakfast is because back in the industrial revolution, like, well, you're going to be working 14 hours in the factory. You don't get a break. So you better eat breakfast. So we started eating breakfast because it lined up with industrialization of humans. But the way we ate before that is we oftentimes did skip, did skip breakfast. We'd have you know our meal in the middle of the day. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have electric lighting. So we had candles and kerosene lamps in the evening. And it was relatively dim. And then we go to sleep. And now, like, oh, I've got all the lights on. You know, I can stay up as late as I want. So is our environment set up to make us weak, not intentionally, but it's doing that. So by studying the science and studying biology and understanding, wait, if I change this outside of me, will it cause additional power inside of me? And the answer is sometimes Mm -hmm. yes, but you have to know how to do it. And then the getting out of your own way, you know, I I fasted in a cave for four days led by a shaman uh, as a part of writing fast this way. But I've also gone to Tibet and learned meditation from the masters and went to South America and did ayahuasca before anyone could spell it and you know, before it was a, a tourist thing to do. In fact, they, they looked at me and they're like, you're white. 
this is for local people. You'll throw up. Why would you ever do this? That was literally what they said. I'm like, no, I just, I've read about this. I know it's, it's unusual, but you know, hook me up. And so they found a shaman and went into the jungle and, you know, had a ceremony and, you know, it's hard to imagine that in 20 years it's become, you know, you go to the airport, this guy's waving signs. <laughs> you probably shouldn't go to one of those guys. But the idea is I went on a path because once you start tapping into the power of your biology by eating right or by not eating at the right times, you get so much more energy that now you have enough energy to do the inner work to the point that I started a, a neuroscience company called 40 years of Zen. Mm. where it's a five day super intensive program. And uh, even in fact, Vishen Lakhiani wrote about it in his book, but it's, it's super crazy intense work. You just can't do that much intense personal work unless you eat the right stuff. Mm. Cause if you eat stuff that sabotages you or you don't eat enough, you just don't have the raw electrons in your body to go into the spiritual states that are necessary for getting to the next level. And this is what you're talking about in terms of a spiritual part fast, which you do cover in the book. Um, I, there's so much to unpack in there. One of the reasons, one of the things I did want to ask you was you've written several books, right? Um, even when we're looking at um, like superhuman cult favorite, it's got diet in there. It's got light therapy in there. It's got sleep. It's got gut health. It's got all these things woven into superhuman. And here you've, you know, your books generally cover a lot of ground. And I imagine that I just am surprised that there's this much to cover on the topic of fasting. You wrote a book dedicated mm -hmm. solely to the topic of fasting. Why is fasting so important? Well, here's how to write a book on fasting. Step one, don't eat for a while. Step two, it's good for you. Here's some references from PubMed. There, I'm an author. Okay. Yeah. There's plenty of books that tell you fasting is good for you. Uh -huh. However, there are plenty of books that tell you exercise is good for you. And about 8% of people exercise the amount that they're supposed to. Mm. So there's a huge gap between knowing and doing. Implementing. And yeah. everything that I write about in all of my books, it, it's look, here's the ROI for doing it, the return on investment. But I'm not talking about investing dollars. Everything we invest is energy. Because if you have money and you have time, but you have no energy, you're going to take a nap. Hmm. It doesn't matter, hmm. right? If you have time and you have no energy, nothing happens. If you have money and you have no energy, you'll spend all your money to get your energy back. So we invest energy in a practice and maybe time and money too, but you can make those if you have enough energy. And we get energy back. You might also get dollars, you might also get time, but really how much work was it and how much more did I get back? And what you don't do is convert your energy into something that doesn't give you energy because then you lose over time. And fasting is the single highest return on investment activity that there is. And the reason for that, it has to do with math. <laughs> it's because if you were going to make breakfast, it took you time and energy and money to make breakfast. When you learn how to do intermittent fasting, you didn't take any time to make breakfast. It didn't take any energy and it didn't take any money, but you got more energy back than you would have had if you ate breakfast, if you're doing it right. And so all of a sudden, you mean I, I actually invested a negative amount and I got more energy back? Positive That's returns. the highest ROI you can get, right? And it's also one that sounds scary. Like most people who have never tried an intermittent fast or a longer fast, mm -hmm. when I weighed 300 pounds, man... The idea of skipping a meal was offensive because I knew, look, as soon as I get hungry, I'm going to get hypoglybitchy and I'm going to be unable to think and I'm going to yell at people around me and I'm going to act like a jerk and I'm working on not being a jerk. Mm. So I was afraid of being hungry because hunger equaled being a jerk. And then I realized I'd also learned as a 300 pound guy, if you don't eat six meals a day, you'll go into starvation mode and then you'll gain even more weight. Okay. On his face, that's absurd. You have to eat all the time to get thin. Okay, whatever. But <laughs> for me, someone said you should try fasting. And I was like, that's disgusting. Like, what's wrong with you? Don't you know? Like, you're stupid. Yep. Of course, I was in my 20s and probably full of ego. But when I finally was like, okay, I've done enough personal development work. I'm afraid of being hungry because I don't want to go into starvation mode because starvation equals death. And because I don't want to be fatter and I don't want to be a jerk. Mm. And I was afraid of being lonely on top of that, which I've found from some other work. So I hired a shaman and I said, I want you to drop me off in a cave in the desert for a vision quest, no food, no people in, within 10 miles in any direction uh, for four days. 
And let me just sit with all of those messages because I know I'm not going to die in four days. Mm -hmm. I had water. It takes two months to starve to death or longer, right? So I wasn't actually going to starve, but I sure thought I was, or I sure felt like I was, even though I didn't think I would. Mm -hmm. And part of intermittent fasting is just understanding there are techniques, ones that haven't been written about before, that you can do during an intermittent fast so that you can do a working fast where you have to show up for your family, you have to show up for your job, for your life, you got enough stress going on. A traditional spiritual fast, oh, let's just relax. You can rest for the day, right? But no, you can't rest for the day. It's freaking Monday morning and you have a job. And if you don't take care of your job, we're in the middle of a pandemic right now, like you need to show up. Mm -hmm. So how do you get the benefits of fasting, which right away that day are more energy, not less, mm -hmm. without going through the hangry, hypoglybitchy, cranky, tired, unable to focus mode? And there are metabolic hacks for that that allow you to still get the weight loss, to still get the energy, to still get healthier cells and show up in your life. And there's also a time when you want to shift gears and you want to say, okay, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to do the inner work that's involved with a longer fast where it's fasting for personal development as well as biology. And to separate those two out, that's worthy of a book. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I do want to find out more about the cave, but I think those that are tuning in want to find out more about how they actually navigate their day to day and the fast that you mentioned with the daily fasting and still getting the benefits from fasting. But what are some of the hacks that are in there? All right. And the book is called Fast This Way, and I'll, I'll go relatively fast. That's what I did there. Um, <laughs> let me go through these for you. Uh, <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Bad jokes are my actual superpower. Um, <laughs> yeah. The first fasting hack that you can do during a fast is black coffee. And there are many people say you can only have water during a fast because that's what mice had in a study. Well, that's my interpretation and, of, the, of a fast is water only. Yeah. Yeah. There's no rule about that. What fasting is, is fasting is going without. And you can fast from carbs. It's called a keto diet. You can fast from junk food. It's called eating healthier. You can fast from alcohol. You can fast from porn and masturbation. You can fast from hate. If you want to be a real badass about it, it's hard to do. But try and go on a four-hour hate fast where you don't think a bad thought about anyone or anything. Okay, that is a serious fast. It requires... <laughs> And until you've done a certain amount of personal development work and awareness, it's amazing all the stuff that's bounced around in your head that you think is necessary to keep you alive. Mm. And you realize there's something in there that's not me that's, um, that's making me think I'm going to starve. It's making me think about food. And the first reason that, or the first hack, this black coffee hack mm. is magic because in the book, I found a study 15% of the thoughts the average person has every day are about what's for their next meal. Okay. That's an average person. If you're fat, like I was, it's probably 50% of your thoughts. Yeah, so if your metabolism say. isn't working, it's a lot more. And you're like tacos, yeah. donuts, right? Okay. Maybe there was something higher value you could do with 15% of your mental capacity. And it's, yep. You want to turn off that voice. What black coffee does that's fascinating is the amount of caffeine in two small cups of coffee, according to a researcher out of University of California, San Diego, it doubles production of ketones in the body. So the word break fast breakfast, it means when you start eating your first meal of the day. And what I recommend people do is eat a little bit earlier. You want to eat before it's dark, but you need at least three hours after dinner before you go to bed. But let's say you did four hours. So you eat at five or even eat at six, you go to bed at 10 and say you sleep eight hours. You already fasted for 12 hours, which mm -hmm. is the bare minimum that's necessary. If you can go another four hours, you just did a 16 hour fast. And really that means eating mid morning. And most people can wait until lunch, but that last couple hours is tough. And what black coffee does by boosting ketones just a little bit, by doubling the amount that would normally be present, it helps you to not think about food and to not be hungry. So instead of using willpower to ignore the voice that gets louder and louder and louder in your head, what you're actually doing is you're saying, oh, I don't have any thoughts about food. And that small amount of ketones turns down a hunger hormone called ghrelin, and it turns mm. up a satiety hormone called CCK, which is brought to you by Calvin Klein. 
And <laughs> what, what you end up with is, okay, is stupidly effective to have a cup of coffee. Yeah. Now, the next fasting hack on top of that is one I'm very famous for, and I'm not trying to sell more Bulletproof coffee. I talk about stuff that works, and sometimes mm -hmm. I have to make it because you can't buy it. Mm -hmm. Bulletproof Scratchy coffee, take age. the black coffee. Mm -hmm. You add a little bit of grass-fed butter. It doesn't have to be very much for a fast. Um, and then you add some C8 MCT oil. And C8 MCT oil is a second fasting hack there. It works because it quadruples ketone production. Normally, if you were fasting the way you would say an Ayurveda or any other fasting discipline, it takes at least two days before you turn on ketones. And then on the third day, like, oh, I'm not hungry and I have all these amazing thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's because the neurons in your brain will use ketones as a higher energy fuel and you get the clarity. But if you can use these other things to add the high energy fuel on the first day of your fast, not only do you take do you get clarity the first day, you get mm -hmm. energy the first day, but that level of ketones dramatically reduces any thoughts about food. So for me, it was a liberating experience. It used to be, okay, it's 1130. I am losing it. I can probably make it until lunch, but I'm going to think about killing and eating one of my colleagues because I'm so hungry and I can't focus and all this. And to just go the entire morning and someone puts the donuts out at 10 a.m. And you look at them and you're like, actually, I just don't want one. Mm. Instead of that voice in your head that's like, eat the donut. No, eat the donut. No. And you have this inner argument. And eventually it's like a two-year-old pestering you. You finally go, all right, fine. I'm just going to eat half a donut. And after it's like, why did I eat half the donut? I said I wouldn't. Like, what's wrong with me? It's not that you ran out of willpower. It wasn't a moral failing. It was that your biology thinks you're going to die if you don't eat the donut. And it's going to yell at you. And it's going to keep turning down your energy until you eat the donut. Um, you are driven in large part by these ancient urges that come from the operating system of all life. And avoiding famines is kind of important for mm. all life to stay alive. Mm -hmm. So this bulletproof coffee hack, it works magically during a fast. But then you get people go, well, there were some calories in there, therefore it's not a fast. Mm. Like, well, let's think about what a fast does. When you're fasting, you're not raising insulin in the body at all. Mm -hmm. and you're not turning on your protein digestion systems at all. Third parties have validated of all possible breakfasts, Bulletproof Coffee has the lowest effect on insulin because it doesn't change at all. It's only fat that can be metabolized directly as fuel. MCT oil can't even be stored as fat. It gets burned for energy, the same as if you've been fasting for two days. And it teaches your body that burning fat is a normal state. So you do this, and you start, okay, I, I feel really good. And I've turned off that hunger voice. But the third fasting hack, and one that, that has never been written about in the context of fasting, is that prebiotic fiber. This is a soluble mm. fiber that is necessary in our diet. Most people don't get enough. Most people who do get enough are poisoning themselves with large amounts of grains and other anti-nutrients from their food in order to try and get healthy fiber. If, if I'm like, oh, here's fiber with cyanide, people are like, oh, it's got fiber, I'll take it, right? So you kind of want just the fiber. Right. But when you do that, that also is shown in many studies to make you live longer, also to suppress hunger and to feed the good bacteria that thin people have so that you have more of the kind of bacteria that keep you thin and less of the kind that make you fat. So for someone who's never fasted before, who, who feels like they would die or completely lose it if they skipped breakfast and didn't have a muffin in the middle of the morning, you do all three fasting hacks the first time you fast. And you drink this and you're like, oh my God, I'm so full. I don't even want lunch. And lunch comes around and for the first time ever, you're like, I guess I could eat. Instead of what most people have, which is, oh my God, it, I can't wait to eat. Like it's totally lunchtime. I've got to, like, I've got to go eat. So the difference between cravings and hunger is very different. And a lot of people, including me when I was heavy, I never had been hungry without having a craving. Mm. So fast this way is about how do you do your first fast and how do you do any fast so that you get the autophagy, the metabolic benefits of fasting, even though there was something other than water in your body. So the idea of only having to have water comes from animal studies, but the understanding of our biology and how it all fits together, how it works, allows you to say, oh, I actually get more out of my fast when I do these practices instead of less. I also talk about supplements in the book that you can take during fasting that give you more results than not taking supplements. So it's about, do I have to do it the way the mice did it, or can I do it in a way that gives me more results with less energy invested? And 
I'm ultimately the laziest person on the planet. I mean, I want to do less work and get better results. I mean, I'm willing to admit it. <laughs> I could challenge you on that one, but we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> so well, some of those, uh, there's a lot in the ground that we covered in there. And um, one of the things that like, so some of those added herbs and supplements are polyphenols, some of those things that we're, we're talking about that can support you fast and, and get you even more benefits. Polyphenols are really interesting during a fast because there's two big classes of gut bacteria um, that we've studied in obese people and people with diabetes and all. There's Firmicutes and Bacteriodetes. And Firmicutes can eat all kinds of stuff, but Bacteriodetes only eats polyphenols. Mm. You can't take it as a supplement. There's no probiotic with Bacteriodetes. So when you're doing an intermittent fast and you say, oh, I'm gonna have polyphenols, whether it's from coffee or even you know, supplemental polyphenols, you're feeding the thin person bacteria that's in you and you're starving the fat person bacteria that's in you, mm. which likes sugar. So at that point, you're like, haha, I just hacked my gut bacteria and it's gonna hack me back. You change the environment inside of you so that you had more control of your own biology. And there are many other supplements that work. And in Fast This Way, I talk about supplements you shouldn't take when you're fasting. For mm -hmm. instance, most amino acids will break a fast or I, there's something that I call them the barfy four. If you take those when your stomach's empty, you're really going to hate your life. But there are others that are super beneficial, like minerals, like magnesium, and even certain types of digestive enzymes that help your body to accelerate the removal of junk proteins throughout your body. So a water only fast, meh, I'm hoping my body does it. Or I'm like, hey, I just took a whole bunch of protein degrading enzymes that now my body can use to break down excessive scar tissue during the fast. So I actually improve faster than I would if I did it the old way. So it's about carefully and selectively adding things that don't block the effects of the fast, but block the pain of the fast or give you more results quickly. And the point here is anyone, no matter how heavy they are, no matter how tired they are, is capable of going for 18 hours without food without being hungry if they try the fasting hacks. And there's enough science in the book to understand that if you did this one thing that costs less and takes less time than you do now, you radically reduce your chances of getting diabetes as you age. And you could say, well, look, I'm young, I'm full of power, I'm not worried about diabetes. Yeah, 48% of people under age 40 have early onset mitochondrial uh, sufficiency. What that means is that you suck at turning air and food into electrons already. And oh, you're like, you're, you're kind of tired you know, end of the day. No, you should be full of energy at the end of the day, whether you're young or you're old. It doesn't matter. But that only happens if you actually are good at turning food and air into electricity. Mm. Fasting makes that happen. If you get diabetes or even just moderately high blood sugar as you age, it radically increases your chances of the big four killers that you read about in Superhuman. And diabetes is the first one because diabetes is a precursor to cancer, heart disease, and Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. And most people listening to this today, unless they take charge of their biology, that's what's going to take you out. You just, you play the odds. It's not COVID. <laughs> the <laughs> odds are, and you know, whatever, a hundred times more people die of those conditions every year than of viral infections of all types. Mm -hmm. It's a really big deal. So control your blood sugar because you skipped breakfast because maybe at dinner a little bit earlier, it's not that hard to do. You don't even have to do it every day. In fact, women might not want to do it every day. You just do it most days, you do it three days a week, four days a week, and you have more energy and more focus on the day you did it, and you lose weight, your brain works better the rest of the time, and you live longer, and the last 20 years of your life will not involve diapers, tubes, wheelchairs, and forgetting your own name. It's that big of a deal. Like there's no bigger return on investment than skipping breakfast. For those that are tuning in that are the gluttons, this is actually my current practice. And one of the things that um, may not be mentioned by Dave just then is you get a lot more freedom of choice over what you eat in your window as well. Right. So I skip breakfast and I'm usually eating. So right now it's 12.30 here and you know my first meal is usually around one o'clock. And similar to how you described, there is no real craving or intensity. Um, and my first dinner dinner is usually around five. And then, you know, if I had to sneak in a dessert, sometimes I'll have just such a large lunch that, you know, it'll just basically be like yogurt yeah. and, and fruits and stuff at five and just really like, you know, cash in. Yeah. And, but the, the, when I look at what I get to eat 
it's like, yeah, well, that's, you know, like the choices that I get to make are much freer and there's so much more variety in my food. Um, when I'm having my, these multiple meals a day, you're trying to get your macros right. I remember being in that paradigm. Oh my God, I, I can't believe, I can't imagine going back there. <laughs> well, it's funny. I've, uh, right now I'm 23 and a half hours into a fast mm. and I wasn't really planning on this. I was going to have lunch, but I had another interview that ran over at lunch and you know what? I didn't stress. I didn't care. I didn't have to go find a protein bar. Mm -hmm. I literally was like, oh, I've got this. Like, in fact, if I didn't eat dinner tonight and I woke up tomorrow morning and said, oh, I guess I'd maybe have another bulletproof coffee. Maybe I'll eat lunch. It would be just fine. Mm -hmm. And to have that level of, of not just willpower, it's not even about willpower. It's just, oh, my body's got this. It's making energy. I've got the focus. Everything works. And the reason it works is because I taught my body that it is safe to go without for brief periods of time. And because it knows food's always going to be available because I don't over fast. I'm not always in ketosis. You know, I, I don't, you know, hold back when it's time to eat. I eat enough food. The body's like, okay, I must build myself so that I can wait for food for a while. And it's that ability to wait for food for a while that underlies metabolic flexibility, that underlies blood sugar regulation and underlies ultimately having a better brain. And it's, it's so freeing because there would have been a huge number of times in my life, especially in my career in Silicon Valley, where I would have just been so incredibly focused on, oh my God, I didn't get a snack. Like maybe I can jump out of the meeting and like eat three almonds. Like I have to have something in there. Mm. That voice is gone and I can, I can show up the way I want to show up whenever and intermittent fasting 10 plus years people lost a million pounds on this bulletproof intermittent fasting and some critics are like well it's not fasting because there are calories i'm like explain the 10 years of results mm. with bulletproof not just with me but with millions of people who are doing this in the morning it is the easiest simplest way to work a busy day and do an intermittent fast at the same time and once you do it for a while you'd be like oh Maybe I just want black coffee. Maybe I just want prebiotic fiber. Maybe I just wanted water. It doesn't matter. But to get to that point is a really big gap for someone just starting out. And I don't want people to have to go through gaps that make them tired and hungry and cranky. It's mm. just unnecessary. Yep. And so what I'm hearing is also with the, with the butter that goes in your bulletproof coffee, fats don't contribute to, uh, they don't deter the, the benefits from fasting, even though you're consuming fats. A small amount of fat, especially MCT oil, which can't even be stored as fat in the body. It doesn't even activate the liver. Um, it doesn't break a fast. Most literature on fasting says you can have some small number of calories. In fact, there's a fasting mimicking diet out there. There's a technique in fast this way called uh, bulletproof protein fasting. You can eat a thousand calories of food in a day as long as there's less than 15 grams of protein and your body will keep on digesting your proteins. You'll, you'll maintain autophagy which is the magic of, of fasting. And there's a few mm -hmm. other things that happen. So there are definitely purists who say you have to do it, but these are people who don't care that you have to go to work in the morning, mm -hmm. right? So I would encourage anyone, yeah, do a water fast for a day, see how you feel on that, but don't make that a day with the big meetings, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, you can compare and contrast the two. What I find is most people, when they're getting their metabolism working, they do the bulletproof cell intermittent fasting. And then they get to a point where I just have a cup of black coffee, I'm good to go. Or they do that and then, wow, I don't know why I'm really hungry this morning, I'm kind of tired, I'm gonna make it a bulletproof fast today. And then they go to another one. But this is the easiest on-ramp there ever has been. And the number of people have lost 50, 70, 100 pounds, it's countless. But what they all say, it's really weird. I did it without being hungry. Hmm. And when I weighed 300 pounds, when I, and that was, you know, 50% more than my current body weight, I went to the gym an hour and a half a day, six days a week. I went on a low-fat, low-calorie diet. And after 18 months of that, without fail, I still had a size 46 inch waist. I'm a 33 inch waist right now. And it just, you didn't, you don't lose weight on that. And if you do lose weight, it comes roaring back. Mm -hmm. And when you do it this way, you're just never hungry. And you, oh, I have to buy new pants. I had to buy new pants. And it's sustainable for decades because you're just not hungry. And any diet that makes you hungry, you will fail. And you will fail because it's in the operating system of all biological systems, not even just humans. In fact, we should talk about that. You'll, you'd like it because of your, your personal development angle. Tell me about it. 
I studied artificial intelligence in my undergrad, and the first half of my career was building and managing and hacking complex systems on the internet. Mm. So I learned that you can control and manipulate a system without knowing all of its components. Mm. That's what hackers do. In fact, that's even today, it's pretty miraculous that you're in Australia and I'm in Victoria, the other Victoria, British <laughs> Columbia. And you know, we're going around the planet and the little packets that we're talking about, it's going through all kinds of equipment that you and I don't own or even know about. But if something went wrong, we could troubleshoot it. Mm -hmm. So our biology has a lot of commonalities to that. And you realize that there's emergent behaviors in complex systems. Mm -hmm. So when I write about human behaviors, and when I wrote Headstrong, the book about mitochondria in the brain, this emerged after I published the book. I'm like, I've got it. There's a set of algorithms that all life has to do. The smallest form of life is either a spore or uh, you know, a fungal spore, or it is a bacteria. Mm -hmm. Bacteria don't have brains. They have very limited rules they can follow that have to create everything they do. And here's the rules that drive all life, whether it's a plant or a bug or you or me. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about from the mitochondria in our cells. Step one, run away from, kill, or hide from scary things. It's fear. And the reason you do that, okay, you're trying to design a system that will self-replicate and survive forever. Mm. If it doesn't have a protection system, something will eat it, mm -hmm. right? So you put 10 times more energy on fear because it's game over. Now, mm -hmm. if we think being yelled at by our boss is scary, then we get 10 times more energy on that. If we think starving is scary because we skip breakfast, we put 10 times more energy on that. And it sucks all of our thoughts, all of our attention, all of our energy. It changes our metabolism. And humans, we think our way out of it. Uh, bacteria usually makes a toxin because that's all it can do, right? And a tree forms a thick shell or spines or most plants have huge amounts of toxins to keep other things from eating them, all these plant defense systems. Mm. And then you get to the next word that all life has to pay attention to and it's food. So we have fear and then we have food. And this is because famines have killed everything throughout all of recorded history. So this means eat everything. That's the rule, you know, run away from killer hide and then eat everything. And if you can do those two things, you've done a great service to your species by staying alive for a while. And this is why when your cells are not at capacity on energy, someone puts the bagel in front of you and the bagel talks to you. It's not talking to you, it's <laughs> talking to these quadrillion ancient bacteria, bacteria that are studded throughout your body that are actually saying, you know what? I already know from 2 billion years of evolutionary history, if you don't eat that thing, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. And that's why you get five times more focus on food than it warrants, unless mm -hmm. you're actually in a place with no food. And then the third F word that all life has to do to stay around on the species, just all species have to do to stay around on the earth forever. Any thoughts on what that one would be? <laughs> this is not a G-rated show, but I, <laughs> I think you're leading me into it. <laughs> Uh, the F word, F-U-C-K, is that what we have to do? Oh, I mean, I was talking about fertility, man. I, oh, I, I didn't realize that you were such a, such a bad person, but uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> it is nice, indeed nice. the one I you see, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> I set you up and you went right for it. Um, but yes, it is that one. And that gets about three times more energy than it really needs. Right. And when adults do not um, have love in their life, uh, or at least sex, um, we feel something is wrong. There is a hunger, a desire for that. And it's because the species will die if we don't get laid. Mm -hmm. Okay, We know that's not true, but our body doesn't know that's not true. Mm -hmm. Right now, I have to ask you this. Have you ever done anything in your life that you're ashamed of that didn't come from one of those three F words? <laughs> Great question. Yeah, very, very illuminating. Yeah, they so, underpin a lot of that, don't they? That system is not you. That's your meat operating system. It is designed to keep your meat alive if you're not in there. And it actively doesn't want you to be in charge. Because if you're in charge, they can't do their job to keep your meat alive. And they're useful. If you lean on a hot stove, you pull your hand away before you burn yourself. Mm -hmm. But you didn't decide to pull your hand away. Something else decided, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? It was the ancient bacteria that are running things. So what the saving grace of those F words is that there's a fourth F word and these are in order of priority and all life does this, even bacteria mm -hmm. and it's friend. 
So bacteria collaborate to make kombucha and yogurt and cheese or <laughs> biofilms. Yeah. And humans collaborate to make communities and tribes. Mm-hmm. And we actually are wired to be kind and support each other. It's in our bones. It's actually inside the cells inside our bones. And it's hard to do that if you're getting 10 times more focus on fear or on food or on, well, reproduction mm-hmm. or just even on, on feeling a lack of love in your life. So what could we hack in that system? So that that doesn't suck all of our energy. Because if you put all of your stuff into those first three, you never get to do the fourth F word, much less hmm. um, the the final step, which is you know transcendence, which is self evolution. Mm-hmm. Well, what happens there is food is the lowest hanging fruit because if you turn off hunger, you get that fifteen percent of your thoughts back, mm-hmm. and now you've got all this extra energy, and you can look at the fear word and go, hmm, I wonder why I'm so reactive right now. Hmm. I wonder why I'm thinking all these thoughts that I didn't want to think that are not very nice and not very useful. And because you have enough energy, because you're not distracted by food and because you're actually making more energy because you fixed your little bacteria by fasting. Now you have the power to do the work to be less fearful, which automatically frees up more energy and makes you more able to focus on the third and fourth F words. So you can get love in your life in a healthy way. And so you can support your community and do what you're here to do. That's why I was willing to write a book on fasting because it's that important. I love that. Thank you so much, Dave. And in there, the yeah, freeing up the bandwidth from that food perspective and, and shifting the energy from hunger, uh, from craving to an understanding your relationship with hunger. Does that kind of allude to the spiritual benefits that you found potentially in the cave or even what you're writing about in the book in terms of the spiritual benefits of fasting, having more opportunities to to look at ourselves and and focus on those things which actually um yeah help us with through love and and community it, it's one of the the spiritual benefits and it's interesting eating even really healthy food takes energy because you have to digest it so mm-hmm. stuff that would have gone into thinking or would have gone into self-repair goes into digestion so you're investing in digesting this so you have more energy and more building blocks for later But when you fast, you get the energy that would have gone into digestion, you get it back. And most food is not all good. All food has three components in it. It's got energy, which Mm -hmm. is not a bad thing. It's called calories. You actually need those. (laughs) So low calorie foods are not superior by definition. Mm -hmm. It has nutrients and it has Mm anti-nutrients. These are things that are bad for you that are in food. And so all foods have a ratio of all three. Mm -hmm. And you get these, I'm just going to call them poor thinkers who say, oh, we have to eat based on nutrient density. What that means is you don't get any calories. You ignore how bulky the food is. Even if it won't fit in your stomach, it doesn't matter. And all you pay attention to is how many nutrients. You ignore the anti-nutrients and you ignore the energy, Mm. which is why nutrient density is a scam. It doesn't work. It never has worked. For instance, Under the rules of nutrient density, if I gave you a bowl that had cyanide and had a multivitamin in it, dude, it's super high nutrient density. It's just a multivitamin. You should totally take it. They ignore the toxins and the inflammation. (sighs) Anything that causes inflammation is stealing energy from your mitochondria that should have gone into your brain or into your body, and it's going into inflammation instead. That's Mm. the core definition of inflammation is mitochondrial dysfunction. It means that they, instead of making energy from air and food, they made inflammation because mm. something went wrong. So if you eat a food that gives you a craving and causes inflammation, it's going to be hard to fast, right? And you're not going to be able to focus on whatever spiritual progress you want to make. So when you fast, you stop eating anti-nutrients, you stop using energy for digestion, and you form ketones after about two days, which are a higher octane fuel. So it's this beautiful thing that happens inside the body. We're like, wait. I got three different upgrades to the amount of energy that I have and I lowered my distractions. So now I can really, cause I'm, I'm in like super power mode. I can now go in and do the work on gratitude or forgiveness or feeling a sense of oneness with the universe or whatever the thing that you're working on is, or just figuring out why you do what you do that you wish you didn't do. Mm. That's why all spiritual practices have fasting of some form or another in them because it lets you get several systems out of the way that that subtly block you so you can be in that flow state in that zone state and well dave skipping 
breakfast and having a coffee instead of breakfast in the morning. No, no, that's a working fast. You wanted metabolic benefits to give you stronger, more powerful cells and better biology and more mental focus right then. Mm -hmm. That's not a personal development activity. Mm -hmm. Now, doing it like that, looking at the donut and realizing I didn't want the donut and I'm not going to die without the donut, that's personal development, but it's, it's small stakes personal development. It's when you wait till the weekend, you go, you know what? I'm going to fast for 24 or 36 hours. Maybe I'm only going to have coffee or I'll just have water. I'm, I'm actually going to feel the hunger, right? And I'm going to go into places that are places of discomfort and I'm going to explore my discomfort so I can actually turn that off. Some discomfort is, is made by the stories in our heads, by our beliefs or by our traumas that we don't, we don't think about. And some of them are actually caused biologically. Because mm -hmm. if that coffee that you drank was coffee that was fermented wrong and has toxins in it, some coffee makes you jittery and cranky and some doesn't. Mm -hmm. I, and I gave up coffee for five years because I would want to punch people and I'd want a lot of sugar an hour or two after I had coffee. I thought I was allergic. No. It turns mm -hmm. out it's mold toxins in coffee that do that. When I made lab tested coffee, I can drink it every day and I have for years. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what else are you doing that gets in the way? And what I learned through the process of intermittent fasting, the process of fasting and all is, wow, if there's nothing going on in there and I eat one thing, what's it going to do to me? And you'd be surprised how sometimes that one thing doesn't work that you thought worked. Mm. Prime example of all examples is kale. Mm. Kale is bad for you. It is not good for you. <laughs> and if you've ever so had it, a, it taste that bitter. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, if, so I, I live on a small farm. We have sheep and we have pigs and we have chickens. Chickens will eat kale, but chickens are dumb. Mm. Uh, the pigs will spit out kale. The sheep won't eat it because they know. Horses won't eat it either mm. because it's like, oh, it's full of toxins. Mm. So a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to do something healthy for myself. I'm going to have a kale salad for lunch, right? Maybe with some whole grains full of um, phytic acid and lectins on top of it, which are other things that cause cravings. And then a half hour later, they're like, I am so hungry. I feel like I didn't eat. Kale makes you hungry. <laughs> so eating kale before a fast is a great way to not succeed in your fast. Mm -hmm. right? So understanding that some foods are triggers. And part of what I'm doing with, with fast this way, I have this fasting diet roadmap that is, will be downloadable uh, on the website. Actually, in about two more days, I'm on the final rev of it awesome. on the DaveAsprey.com website. And it's a resource because I'm teaching this book for the first time ever. I'm doing a two week free, just as a gift. You send me your receipt on fastestway.com. And there's basically, I was a university lecturer at the university of California. I'm teaching the book and mm. I'm leading people through a gentle fast and a more and a harder fast until we get to the final couple of days where there is a spiritual fast with breathing and everything else where you're going to use it to go deep. And the idea behind that roadmap is these are the foods that don't cause cravings. These are the foods that might cause cravings. These are the foods that always cause cravings. Mm -hmm. And if you just have a basic roadmap, now you can start saying, hmm, I'm going to try one of those foods that might cause cravings. And gee, my wife can eat it and she feels great. And I eat it. And all I want to do is eat everything. Well, <laughs> that food wasn't compatible with your biology and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And just to have that freedom to select foods that leave you satisfied for at least four hours, that's a secondary benefit of learning intermittent fasting because you know what drives your cravings versus your hunger. Mm. Yeah, I think that's really powerful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I think the element of having a community supporting you through your first fast is invaluable. And uh, I think that's fastthisway.com is the best place to, to check that well, out. We'll have more than 10,000 people fasting together and learning fasting with all the comments and what you get from the community, just like you're saying, you probably think you're alone. Like, you know, why is it that when I eat almonds, I, I found that almonds are a major source of cravings for me. And you're like, oh, look, there's 300 other people who also figured that out. Mm -hmm. By the way, there's also 500 people who said, I eat almonds all the time and I love them. And what's going on there? They're high in oxalic acid, which they're also high in lectins. So if you're sensitive to those two things, like most people are to some degree or another, they may just, you know, they're healthy, but they're not healthy for you. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay. I learned something valuable. So I'm not saying almonds are bad. I'm saying they're, they might be, they're a suspect food. And only by playing around with this, can you do it? But if you're doing it all by yourself, you're just gonna think you're crazy. Like how could almonds, I know they're good for me. How could they do this? That, that can't be right, it must be me. And then you go back to you know doing the same thing every day. And I'm not picking on those at all. I mean, for some people it's eggs. They're a great food unless you're sensitive in which case they're not. So mm -hmm. the idea is I'm going to feel a morning with no hunger because mm -hmm. I did this bulletproof thing. Mm 
Yeah. Right? And then I'm going to eat. And after that meal, I should be full for four hours. And if I'm not full for four hours, hmm, there's really precious knowledge there. Mm-hmm. I love that. And just to drive um, that point home, I'd like to sort of, it's hard to have this conversation without plugging your own products. But the thing is, you scratched your own itch. So that's probably just, you did that. <laughs> I don't know how to know how to know how to circumnavigate that. But yeah, I'm not is, trying to plug it. Like, no, 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 just no, 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 really no. What, I, what, I mean, what, I'm, what I'm saying okay. is, I, I did this thing with realizing trying to take black coffee in the mornings to support me through my fast. And actually, bro, it didn't work. Like I found it like made me really jittery. And then yep. when you get <laughs> bulletproof coffee, just the beans, right? Yeah, it, it, it yeah. works. So, and this is what we're talking about. Like the cravings, like, you know, the, the, the foods that you choose, like you need to also be very clear on, and this is what the community will support each other through from what I'm hearing. Um, and just the value in that man, like, and again, and you know, like I'm, I'm a fan of what you create. So I'm, I, yeah, I really appreciate where you're coming from with that, you know, like the bulletproof coffee, not jittery. Um, and obviously the intention that went into it, finding, you know, what are the elements of that make coffee jittery? Uh, what are the elements of, like you said, you know, like kale, yes, nutrients, but, you know, also full of toxins. Finding out what works and what doesn't work, um, I think is really, really powerful. Yeah. The, it, with, with Bulletproof, you know, I'm the founder um, and, you know, I, I grew the company. It, it's a sizable company now. Mm-hmm. And the, the God's honest truth is that if everyone who does the fasting training, fasting challenge with me does or doesn't buy Bulletproof coffee, it's not going to change my life. Mm-hmm. It, it truly won't. <laughs> and I'm, it might change theirs, which is why I started the company in the first place. Right. Yeah. And, and on one hand, that could sound like a super douchebag comment. Like, you know, Dave doesn't care. I care deeply, mm. but I care about how people feel because that fourth F word that we're wired to be nice and support each other. Mm. I really want more of that in the world. I have kids. Like I'm going to live to at least 180. So I just want a world full of people who are not craving all the time and not fearful all the time. And when that happens, we're all going to like line up and go, Oh, how do we make this world a better place? Yeah, and your commitment to it has uh, is not lost on me. I, I remember going to Bulletproof Labs um, in California, and it was just like it was. I don't know how you felt setting it up, but for myself, it was like a, it was like being a kid in a play, candy store. <laughs> <laughs> like I get to play with all this stuff that makes me stronger and feel better, and yeah, that company is is now Upgrade Labs, uh, and it's it's a sister company to the Bulletproof Cafe, and. Uh, we've got two in LA and one is the Beverly Hilton. This is where like the Hollywood elite go. I'm opening one up here under my office in Victoria and we're going to open some more of those this year Yeah. Uh, in the middle of the pandemic. Why? Because the pandemic is temporary mm. uh, and feeling good and having faster recovery than mother nature intended. Um, that's long-term, but what's going to happen with, with anyone who, who does intermittent fasting, like, Oh wait, what else could I do that gives me more energy than I ever had before? And it's a gateway to saying, hmm, maybe I should try these you know, five minutes of breathing exercises because if the return on the amount of energy and time it took me to do that for five minutes, if I feel great for eight hours afterwards, like actually I can make five minutes for that. And if you try and it doesn't work, then find something else. But the idea that are there untapped levels of energy and potential inside of you? There absolutely are. I went from being a 300 pound angry computer hacker with cognitive dysfunction and chronic fatigue syndrome to being where I am now, where I can go all day, every day, right? And I oftentimes do, and I'm doing it with a sense of effortlessness Mm. that comes from having working biology and having removed a lot of the programming around fear that happens. Mm. All of us have these old patterns that are meant to keep our meat alive. They're Mm. called traumas. And when you work through those via whatever path you like best, mine is neurofeedback <laughs> and 40 years of Zen and, you know, kind of looking at myself with a lie detector to tell me, and did you really forgive that, that old grudge? You know, if you didn't, it's going to show in your numbers and you sit there and you swear and you're like, God, I thought I did that. But whatever your path is, it doesn't matter. You start carrying less of a grudge. You start thinking less bad stuff about people and about yourself and you start worrying less about food and you're like, man, there's so much power in here that I was just throwing away unconsciously every day. And that's why fasting is so important. It's a gateway to getting those levels of power. Yeah. And one of the things I'm hearing in there is also, you know, I'm a prescriber to that. We have these three levels of in, three centers of intelligence, almost like our head, our heart, and also our gut. And I know you've done some work with heart math similar to myself um, in the past. And one of the things that I, 
just love the way you said this and I've just been kind of handing it out to so many people subsequently um, has been this conversation around if you want your gut to heal let it sit empty for a minute like just just let it chill um, I've seen so many people like on gut healing diets but fasting doesn't get a mention in it and it's just like yeah man it's a real low-hanging fruit like I just don't know why you wouldn't just pick that apple straight off the tree <laughs> Yeah. Fasting, especially with water or with limited supplements, can be really beneficial for healing a gut. But if you take someone with a broken gut, like I used to have, I was on antibiotics every month for 15 years Whoa. because I would get chronic sinus infections and strep throat. So I had a really wrecked digestion. Uh, living in a house with toxic mold will do that for you. And to fix my gut, I was not capable of functioning in my daily life and doing an intermittent fast or a longer fast. I could not have done it. Mm. But I could have started with Bulletproof Coffee mm. because of the energy thing. I needed that energy because I was already running at 10% of, of the mitochondrial function that I have now. I'm making that number up, but it sure felt like that. I don't know what it really was. And if you only have fat present, it does something really interesting because fat is antimicrobial. It suppresses your gut bacteria a lot like having just an empty stomach. Mm. So you can heal the gut by having only fat, but you might also start with that, get your metabolism working a little bit better, and then go to a water-only fast or water with certain enzymes or even water with enzymes and probiotics during a fast. You can still do that. And a long-term water fast, I just did a big interview about that on Bulletproof Radio, um, it radically resets your gut bacteria. So a lot of species will die out over time and other species change and ratios change. And then you go back to eating. And if you're eating, especially enough of that prebiotic fiber, the good species come back in abundance. And that's part of healing. Um, that's part of healing your gut, but it's not a requirement that you only do water. And if you look at Ayurveda uh, and you look at Chinese medicine, you look at almost every kind of fast, you have tea. Mm. Why is there tea? There's tea because tea has polyphenols because mm. polyphenols feed a certain kind of bacteria in the gut. Like mm. it's okay to have something besides water. It's only like the laboratory water people or a few kind of edge esoteric practices where, okay, I'm gonna fast in a cave in India for a while and I'm gonna start out with tea and eventually I'll get to only water, but they usually start out with tea. There's very very few practices. In fact, I've never found one. And there's a whole chapter on the history of fasting and, and the spiritual uses of it in the book. Um, I have no, no practice to say, okay, tomorrow drink only water for 40 days and 40 nights. That's not how it works, <laughs> you start out. So I, I think there's a very clear argument that says for those of us with the life, especially those of us without this world's strongest metabolism, mm. put some stuff in at the beginning of your fast, just no protein and no carbs. And then you still win. Awesome. Dave, when you're saying you have the opportunity to reset your gut bacteria on just a pure water diet, um, and then obviously adding in um, certain elements there that you mentioned, how long is long? Like, are we talking a few days or 10 days? You, you see... In the book, I really cover fasts of up to four days. Cool. And you certainly can go longer. It's not advisable to do a water-only fast, especially if you're new to fasting, um, for more than a day or two. Mm -hmm. um, I am a huge fan of putting at least a pinch of salt or electrolytes in, which mm -hmm. helps a lot. But the really strict fasting protocols, and the guy I interviewed, uh, Dr. Goldhammer, um, he's been doing fast kind of based on mouse studies, but he says, well, I know water only works. And he puts you on water even without electrolytes. And he said, people oftentimes go nine days, 10 days, 12 days, and sometimes up to 70 days on only water. But they're getting two medical checkups a day and they're laying in a clinic where they're just resting. Hmm. Okay, That is a very radical approach. Um, I believe that you can get better results faster with fewer, with less discomfort by at least doing a few tweaks to that protocol. But he's like, this protocol was studied in animals. I know it works in people. I don't want to change it. So mine is... More benefits, less time is, is the way I think of it. So I would just warn people, doing a long-term water fast can be dangerous. Um, if you do three, four days and you don't have any clear health problems, you'll probably be fine. Hmm. Um, but if you were to start that out, at least the first day when you're gonna be most uncomfortable, and say, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee and then tomorrow I'll have half a cup of coffee and then the third day, just water, you'll probably be a lot happier if you do yeah, it. Totally. <laughs> but you can do it however you want, right? Totally. Uh, I just don't do five, six, seven days on water uh, because 
electrolyte imbalances and other things like that. And also your ability to make good decisions goes down very rapidly. That's why you're supposed to just rest and maybe get a massage when you're doing that kind of practice. I love it. And the thing that I'm hearing that we've been covering through this episode is it's basically almost like a training modality going through this, training yourself to fast, training yourself to yeah. fast. So, you know, you can take it with the fats and the coffee initially, and then you might even go without it if you, you know, and then over that you can start exp- exploring, taking and making it longer and longer. And oops, one day I forgot lunch altogether and I just had dinner. So, oops, you know, yeah. like I ended up fasting for a little bit longer. You end up in a situation that Dave did today, you know, a meeting went over time. You know what? I've had a 23 hour fast and oops, surprised, like all the hunger signals aren't going crazy in my body. Why? Because my body's trained into this space. It, it's really funny. When I first tried a keto diet, it was the Atkins diet back in the mid nineties when I was like desperate for his weight. Okay, I'll try what this you know, crazy guy says. And we didn't understand the type of fat mattered greatly and the type of protein mattered greatly. Mm-hmm. So that was, you know, bacon, cream cheese, pork rinds, doesn't really matter. As long as it's not a carb, you can eat it. Nutrasweet, no problem. You can eat that too, which wrecks your gut and makes you fat, right? So we're missing some pieces of it. <laughs> yeah. But most people now that first time they go to keto, oh God, I have the keto flu. I have a headache. I feel like such garbage. Oh, I'm mm-hmm. wrecked. All right. Well, <laughs> if you read the Bulletproof Diet, I'm like, hey, try starting this out with Bulletproof Coffee because it takes you normally two days of fasting on water or um, tea or something or two days of eating pure keto foods before your body kicks over into this fat burning ketosis mode. Mm. And during that two days, you're likely to feel like garbage, especially if it's your first time fasting, your first time trying a keto diet. So the reason you feel like garbage is that the body's, when it starts to burn, first it, you feel like garbage because the body's like, I got no blood glucose, that's all I know how to burn. And then the body goes, oh man, I'm gonna have to reconfigure my energy production centers to burn fat. But that takes a long time and it takes a lot of energy and you don't have any energy right now. Mm. And as soon as you start burning fat, your fat is full of toxins Mm because your body stores metals and pesticides and hormones and all sorts of crap in your fat cells. Mm -hmm. So now you're dumping crap that causes cravings in your body. No wonder you get BO, you get dragon breath and you feel a headache and you're just not happy. Well, I just don't think people need to go through all that when they start in ketosis. So you start out using the MCT oil, you start out with coffee, which doubles that ketone production. And then all of a sudden, like, you know what? I might've gotten a little bit of BO because I'm burning all this pesticide out of my body, but I didn't get the headaches and just the, I'm feeling so bad, I don't want to drive, which is a common thing when people first try keto or try a two day fast without preparation. But once you've done that a few times, now the cell's like, okay, I learned something. Number one, Sometimes I have to burn fat, so I'm going to reconfigure things throughout the body. And to this day, I take a little bit of MCT oil at least once a day, usually two or three times a day. So my every cell in my body is like, oh yeah, I got fat, I got glucose, I can burn both, right? Which over time, that means I can burn only fat. It means I can effortlessly go into fasting mode. It means I could burn only sugar if I wanted to, or I could burn only protein, which isn't even that good for you. But that's a resilient metabolism. And if I can do this as you know, a 300 pound computer hacker with all the diseases of aging before I was 30 and chronic fatigue syndrome, I'm pretty sure that people listening to this were not as wrecked biologically as I was. Mm. So I'm like the worst case <laughs> and I did it. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for sharing so much on um, the way to access fasting, Dave. I really appreciate it. And just before I let you go, and I may be overstepping our boundary because we've kind of just met, but I'd love to know what you learned um, in the cave, four days fasting, dropped in by yourself. Is it too personal to answer or can no, you share? No, not at all. Um, I, I'm very open about everything, uh, everything that I, I do and, and all. I, I want people to learn from it. I, I am a professional guinea pig um, <laughs> because I'm profoundly lazy. I just want to find out if something can let me do less and, and be more. So, and, and the through line in the book is very much the story of what went through my mind uh, while I was fasting and what I experienced both on the spiritual side and on the, the more just like thoughts side. In fact, it's such a good story. The first time I've done a story like this in a book, the Telegraph uh, in the UK is serializing the book. So they're taking the story of In the Cave and they're publishing it over six weeks in the print edition. It's like, this is really good. I'm like, wow, as an author, that's awesome because Mm. that means my ability to tell a story, not just share science, it's improving. So I'm I'm super honored that they're doing that. Beautiful. And so what what I I did is, is I'm like, okay, I know I'm afraid of being alone. 
Uh, and I, it's driven me to be in relationships that aren't good for me. Cause like, well, yeah, this kind of sucks, but it's better than nothing. Mm. But it, it's cause I was afraid of not having that third F word. Right. Mm. So I'm afraid of hungry. <laughs> I'm afraid of, you know, not having love in my life. Uh, I'm afraid of, you know, other things like being a jerk. So you end up like, wow, there's a lot of fear in there, but it's not rational fear because fear is not rational. It's a feeling. It's not a thought. It doesn't have to make sense. But it also is designed to hide from you. That ancient system that's controlling your meat, it does not want you to know about it because then it can't control your meat. So it skirts. It's, it's the source of the ego. It, it's, it's, it, it's slippery. It moves out of the way. But when you're in a cave, you have no distractions. You have no people. There's nothing you can do. You can journal and you can meditate. And you can you know be irritated by bees or whatever. I mean, there is... Uh, you know, you can you can worry, right? But eventually, the absurdity of it all mm. comes to you. And I remember I had a, a protein bar. And keep in mind, in 2008, protein bars sucked. Like any kind of food bar was horrible. Mm. And one of the reasons I started Tastes Bulletproof was like, I gotta, cement mixer. <laughs> I gotta find something I can eat, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I had one and I had it. I'm like, I'm gonna put it in my backpack just in case. Right. And right as I was leaving the shaman's house that morning of the fast, I was like, you know what? That's copying out. So I, I tossed it on the kitchen table and I didn't take it with me. And I know, I absolutely know I would have eaten it mm. if I'd have had it. Mm. Right. So I wanted to not have, you know, a safety net uh, from mm. that perspective. Although, you know, if I really was losing it, I, every morning I would text the shaman and, uh, you know, there was, you turn on the phone. We didn't, it wasn't a smartphone back then. So just send a quick text. I'm okay. And then great. And then you turn off the phone. And that was the extent of my connection with, you know, the real world. So, you know, I, I just realized how much fear uh, manages things. So like, oh my God, I'm so hungry. Like, you know, what if I pass out? And then what if there's rattlesnakes? Okay. I grew up in a desert. I know about snakes. Yeah, they can coil up in your sleeping bag if you're warm. A, it wasn't that cold. B, I'm up on a rock where they're unlikely to go in a cave that's, you know, got a fire at the front. And it's probably not going to be an issue. And if so, I know how to deal with it anyway. But man, I was like, I had dreams about that. And then I heard this rustling noise. And I'm like, well, what if there's predators? Okay. There aren't really big predators in that kind of a desert. There might be mm. some small black bears, but they don't want anything to do with humans. They're not like grizzly bears where I live now in Canada, where they actually will eat you. <laughs> so there was nothing to really be worried about, but I'm still like, oh. So I pile up a bunch of brush at the entrance of the cave, which is what humans have always done. It's an alarm system. Something tries to come in, you'll hear them. So I'm laying there going to sleep and I hear like a clear noise in it. I'm like, ah, you know, jump up, turn on the flashlight. And look around, there's nothing. And so like, you don't sleep for two hours. You finally go to sleep, you hear it again. And, and I'm just like, what is going on here? And so th this was like a source of major stress. This was my fight or flight response just mm -hmm. going off the charts. And on the fourth day in the morning, I finally figured out there was a bird. It's like, oh, brush, I should try a nest. It was a nocturnal bird. Yeah. So it was just returning. But man, I just lost it over these <laughs> small little things. And it was such a good metaphor uh, mm -hmm. for this. And probably the weirdest um, weirdest like spiritual kind of things. One is there's a kind of bee and I'd sit there to try to meditate, you know, the second day and your eyes are closed. I'm sitting on this rock and these bees are just constantly buzzing around my head and it's infuriating and they just won't leave you alone. They, they don't quite land. You're like, what is up? And just to, to realize, okay, I'm getting super angry about this small little thing. Right. And you know, what, what can I do about it? So by the third day, I have no idea. I, to this day, I, I can't tell you what I was doing, but if I got into a certain meditative state, they'd leave me alone. And then I'd lose the state and they'd come back. And I'm like, okay, maybe this is just me like looking for <laughs> patterns because my brain is boring. But someone else who was doing a fast in a different cave, I talked to them, they had exactly the same experience. And these bees are called sweat bees. They're attracted to the smell of sweat. So they're buzzing around. It's like, there must be something good in here, but you know, they don't ah. actually want you. And maybe I changed my pheromones. I don't know. Maybe I created an energetic field or maybe they were talking to me and I got, I have no idea. Uh, but I, I swear by the end of this, I could meditate and the bees would leave me alone or I just didn't notice them. Or I didn't care about them. Something interesting happened there. And there was another night where I swear it made no sense. It was right as the sun was going down. Okay. I'm in a cave that's been used ceremonially for 10,000 years by the indigenous people of Arizona. And I had permission to be there. And right as the sun's going down, 
clear as day, I'm hearing drums. Like I'm hearing a drum sermon. There was no one for 10 miles in any direction. I still don't know why that happened. And I was like, am I going nuts? Like maybe I should eat something. Uh, but mm-hmm. no, there, there, I have no idea what that was. But it was, it was one of those things where the sense of curiosity, the sense of, of connection with nature, connection with the world around you, it gets really strong when you don't eat because all of your sensors turn on and they don't need to be on in normal life. Hmm. One of the stories that I talk about in the book is a, a friend of mine named Chris who was, went through um, basically special forces style training in the military. And they'd have them fast for a couple of days while carrying a 70 pound backpack and going cross country, right? Like you might have to do it, you know, when you're on deployment in some country somewhere. So, you know, you're going to feel it. But what they did is they hung a cheeseburger from a tree at the destination point. And all of the guys could smell the cheeseburger from two or three miles away. <laughs> what fasting does is it opens up every little sensor and you, right. you realize, wow, there's so much around me that I am capable of feeling and sensing and seeing and being connected Darling to into that the I'm not connected to when I eat. And I swear, yeah. if I'd have been eating every day, I wouldn't have had that. Nature is still great, but it was not the same thing. So fasting opens you up to the world around you. And I definitely learned that. Oh, Dave, thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, I couldn't help but have a little giggle to myself. It's almost like the bees were your own natural version of 40 years of Zen <laughs> with the forgiveness <laughs> exercise. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just letting me know I'm in the right state. <laughs> it, it was the weirdest thing with those bees. I, I will never forget that. And I, I, to this day, think that I was able to tell them to leave me alone. But maybe I, I, I also recognize <laughs> I could have just been confusing myself. I, I don't know. Yeah, and just the the opening up to the subtle the subtleties and the sensitivities from that man. Thank you so much for sharing that, Dave, brother. It is it is such a treat to have you on, and such an honor and a pleasure to be able to share your vibes, your insights from fasting with the Inspired Evolution audience, from myself, from the Inspired Evolution tribe. Thank you so much for being here today. I know that it's not just a day's worth of work that we're sort of having a conversation on it. It's a lifetime's worth of work that you've committed to yourself. So I just want to take a moment to honor and acknowledge just all of that work that you've put into us having such an informed conversation today and truly just the, the impact that you have again and again, and just your sheer commitment to service really inspires uh, me and I'm sure most of those that are tuning in as well. So thank you so much, brother. You are most welcome, Amrit. Thanks for recognizing why I do what I do. Uh, as as an author, I am 100% certain after seven books that the lowest hourly rate of anything I do in my life is writing books. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> it takes thousands of hours and so much energy. But when there's something worth writing, you do it. And then you do the follow-up work to teach it and to share it and to make sure that people are willing to invest you know, eight hours to read the book because they believe and they know that it's worth more than eight hours of investment. And, and that to me is the difference between adding value and getting people to read, you know, 100,000 copies of this book, that's 800,000 hours of human life. If the book isn't worth it, it makes me into a mass murderer. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of dark, but I promise you guys, I'm not a mass murderer. This book is worth your time or I wouldn't put it out there. Fastthisway.com. Check it out. We'll have links to the show notes, uh, to the book in the show notes for the fastest way to learn how to fast. Fastthisway.com. Check it out. And the link to the book will be in the notes. Thanks again, Dave. Wishing you all the best. Thanks, Amrit. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, leave us a comment. And if you want to stay in tune for new episodes launching every Monday, hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Stay inspired to evolve.